Translation is the process whereby the base sequence of a messenger RNA or mRNA is converted into amino acid sequence of a protein. This process requires mRNA, tRNAs, amino acids, a ribosome and other accessory proteins. The mRNA has three main parts. The leader is the part from the 5' end to the translation start codon, also known as the 5' untranslated leader region or 5' UTR. The reading frame is the middle part. It starts with the start codon AUG, followed by a series of three nucleotide codons, each of which codes for an amino acid and it ends with one of the stop codons. UAA, UAG or UGA. The trailer is the last part of the mRNA consisting of the section from the stop codon to the 3' end also known as the 3' untranslated trailer sequence or 3' UTR. The length of the mRNAs varies because of the differences in all three parts of this molecule. Transfer RNA or tRNA brings amino acids to the growing protein during translation. It is composed of a single RNA chain of about 75 to 90 nucleotides, each tRNA having a unique base sequence. After being transcribed, the tRNA folds into a characteristic cloverleaf shape. The anticodon has a 3 nucleotide sequence that matches a codon on the mRNA. The amino acid is attached to the 3' free end at the top of the clover lip. The ribosome assembles amino acids into a polypeptide. Ribosomes have two parts, a large subunit and a small subunit. Ribosomes are made of a ribosomal RNA and various proteins. The active ribosome has three tRNA binding sites, namely E or exit, P or peptidyl, and A or amino acyl. In prokaryotes, translation initiation happens in three steps as follows. First, the small ribosomal subunit or the 30th subunit forms a complex with three proteins called the initiation factor 1, initiation factor 2, and initiation factor 3. A molecule of GTP also joins. The ribosome IF-GTP complex recognizes a sequence in the leader before the AUG start codon. This sequence is called the ribosome binding site or the shine dalgarno sequence after its discoverers. This sequence matches a sequence at the 3' end of the 16S ribosomal RNA of the 30S ribosomal subunit and helps to align the ribosome on the mRNA in its correct reading frame. Second, translation starts at the start codon AUG a few bases after ribosome binding site. The first AUG in proteins codes for a modified form of a methionin. This modification adds a formyl group to the methionin, making it formyl methionin or FMET. The anticodon of this initiated tRNA containing FMET pairs with AUG. When first FMET tRNA binds to mRNA, IF3 is released and the remaining assembled components are called the 30S initiation complex. Finally, the large ribosomal subunit or the 50S subunit binds to the 30S initiation complex. GTP is hydrolyzed and IF1 and IF2 are released. The final complex is called the 70S initiation complex. The FMET tRNA is now located in the P site of the ribosome with its anticodon hydrogen bonded to the mRNA start codon. The initiation is now finished and elongating the completion of translation initiation, the process of elongation commences.
The elongation phase proceeds one codon at a time until it encounters a stop codon. At the conclusion of initiation, if mid tRNA was bound by hydrogen bonds to the AUG codon located in the P site of the ribosome. The forthcoming codon is positioned in the A site. The codon present in UCC which signifies the amino acid serine. In the cytoplasm, the tRNA carrying serine forms a complex with EFTU and GTP. The resulting ACR tRNA EFTU GTP complex makes its way into the A site where the tRNA's anticodon establishes hydrogen bonds with the UCC codon. When the binding occurs, GTP undergoes hydrolysis leading to the release and recycling of the EFTU. With the tRNA molecules present in both the P and A sites, a peptide bond is able to form between the adjacent amino acids. Peptidyl transferase, which is found in the large subunit of the ribosome, catalyzes this reaction. The initial step is the breaking of the bond between FMET and its associated tRNA in the P site. Subsequently, a peptide bond is established between the liberated FMET and the serine, which remains attached to its tRNA in the A site. The formation of a peptide bond is a condensation reaction which results in the liberation of a water. After the peptide bond is formed, the P site contains an uncharged tRNA while the A site holds a tRNA linked to the nascent polypeptide chain. Assisted by EFG and another molecule of GTP, the ribosome shifts one codon down the mRNA strand. The ribosome binds to an EFG GTP complex which triggers the hydrolysis of GTP and initiates the translocation process. The uncharged tRNA transitions from the P site to the E site preventing any new amino acyl tRNA from binding to the A site until the translocation is finalized. Once the tRNA is securely positioned in the P site, the uncharged tRNA is expelled from the E site. With the A site now vacant, it is ready to receive the next amino acyl tRNA thus allowing the elongation cycle to persist. Typically, a polypeptide is composed of approximately 300 amino acids. Let's observe the elongation phase once more. The process of elongation persists until the ribosome encounters one of the three stop codons UAG, UAA or UGA. Stop codons differ from other codons as they do not correspond to any amino acid, hence no standard tRNAs possess anticodons that are complementary to those stop codons. Proteins, known as release factors or RF, aid the ribosome in identifying the termination of the polypeptide chain. These RFs interpret the stop codon and trigger a sequence of termination events that are highly specific. There are three RFs in E. coli, RF1, RF2 and RF3. RF1 is responsible for recognizing UAA and UAG whereas RF2 is responsible for recognizing UAA and UGA. RF3 while not recognizing stop codons plays a role in facilitating the events that follow termination. A stop codon is introduced into the MTA site as a result of elongation and ribosome translocation. The binding of RF1 or RF2 to the stop codon prompts peptidyl transferase to detach the fully formed polypeptide from its tRNA in the P site of the ribosome. Subsequently, the tRNA is removed from the P site of the ribosome which is then followed by the release of the RF and the disassembly of the 70S ribosome from the mRNA. Finally, the ribosome disassembles into its separate 30S and 50S subunits.